Hey guys, so yesterday I cleaned my bookshelf and I decided that I wanted to show you guys all of the Christian books on my bookshelf. So those are these ones over here that I'll be walking through and then maybe in another video I'll go through these. Um, yeah, so I don't want this to take like super, super long, so we'll just get right into it. But some of these books I have not read. Um, some of them I don't know how theologically sound they are but I will tell you which books I recommend and you know you can do your own research but let's start so let's start with oh you can't even see that hold on can you see it now well I'm gonna start with the smaller books that are here so these two you would have seen in a previous video already this is the case for Sorry, this is The Case for Easter by Lee Strobel, and it's about the resurrection of Jesus, like, um, kind of like apologetics, I guess, but looking at if there's evidence for the resurrection of Jesus, I believe. I have not read this one yet, so. This one I keep starting and, like, not really getting super far, but it's called Out of the Comfort Zone, and um, it's about, like, missions work, like, the practicalities of missions work. So there's that. There's this book. Ooh, is this upside down? There's this book. Um, it's kind of old, but it's called Beyond Ourselves by um forget who the author is, Catherine Marshall. It's really good. It is a non-fiction book, and it's kind of hard to describe what it's about, but it's like different. So each chapter is kind of like different stories about the author's life or like people in her life but they all teach you like practical um practical things about like God and our faith walk I also have not finished this one I am on chapter 11 and I've had this book for years like yeah I've had this book since I was a teenager and I have read it like so slowly I'm pretty sure my mom has um finished it already but it is a good book it's just it's one of those books that you read in like a small dosage, I guess, um, because of the fact that like a lot of it is kind of convicting, in my opinion, a lot of it is kind of convicting. And so it's like something that you kind of want to soak in. And that's why I'm already a slow reader, but it's like harder to get through. So let me put these back because I did just reorganize and I don't want to do it again. And I'll pull this out while I'm at it. We've got Even Better Than Eden um, by Nancy, I don't know how to pronounce the last name, but you can see it there. This one is really good. Um, I also don't know how to describe it, but it kind of, let me see, Nine Ways the Bible Story Changes Everything About Your Story. But it there's just like a very interesting take on like Adam and Eve, the Garden of Eden and all of that. Um, I listened to it on audio a while ago and I liked it so much that I bought the book, but then I haven't read through the, the print version since. So I'm not going to say if I recommend it or not because it's been a while since I read it, but yeah, it is a good book though. I can say that. Okay, let's see. Ugh. Okay, there. <laughs> um... This book, it's called The Jerusalem Secret by Ron Cantor. This book is really, really good. It has to do with like the Jewish people and just like the history behind the Jewish people, how, um, how Jesus was a Jewish person and like, it's just, it's really good. I, I'm obviously having trouble like describing all of these books, but, um, this is a sequel. It's a sequel to Identity Theft. I recommend reading that book first. It's really good. This is a fiction book and it's basically about this journalist, this Jewish journalist who um, ends up like coming to Christ and it's like he kind of has like a, a vision or basically this angel shows him all of these like different things in history, how it points to Jesus being the Messiah. So in identity theft, like, that's what's happening. I hope I didn't, um, I, I might have spoiled something, but anyway, in identity theft, like, 
that's what's happening and then in this book book two you're basically kind of going to see like what happens after he comes to Christ um how that affects like family dynamics and stuff like that that's all I'll say this book I do recommend but I only recommend it if you read identity theft first it just makes more sense but it is a good book and then you guys saw this on the previous video it's not that complicated about um relating to guys dating relationships all of that I haven't read it yet so I can't recommend it and I'm a little like I'm not skeptical of it it's just um I'm not sure if it's for like a younger audience or not because there's stuff about like talking to your parents about this this, and that not that you can't talk to your parents as an adult but I don't know anyway I haven't read it yet so yeah if you want to check it out you can and then this book it's called I really need to there this book is called the heart attitudes um I read this with my church it is very good it's another one of those books that is like convicting and I honestly haven't read it like outside of just reading it with my church so I haven't gone back and looked at it it is a good book I wouldn't not recommend it you know it would be a great book to probably read in a bible study with a small group of course you can read it on your own but it might be good to like see um what other people's like thoughts and stuff are because there's discussion questions here I believe yeah so yeah I don't know try it I guess this book turning hurts into halos this is a book that I got from a friend um I haven't read it yet even though it sounds good it's about oh did I even say what this one was about um it says seven keys to healthy biblical community so bam I honestly kind of don't fully remember this book seems to be about like walking through like painful experiences and having joy um let me see yeah it talks about like encouragement it oh it says this book is about adversity tragedy despair but it's also about hope joy and eternal victory in jesus i do not know like theologically how sound it is so i just can't really like say anything about it especially since i haven't read it but that's one of the books on my bookshelf it could still be like a really good book you know I just only want to recommend like what I have read and like really remember so yeah okay let's see I'm gonna pause this while I do this okay next couple of books I'll just go starting from the top this one is called the rapture question so um yeah it's about like different views on the coming of Christ. Um, I haven't read this one either. I got this from church as well. So yeah, can't can't necessarily like recommend it or not recommend it, but I just haven't read through it yet. This book is called Heaven, Your Real Home by Johnny Erickson Tata. This book I will recommend. Um, I heard about this through church and then I, I think I purchased it or someone purchased it for me at the bookstore at the church but anyway it's really good and um if you don't know who she is so Johnny Erickson Tata she is well she's probably like a speaker and stuff too but her story is that she was um paralyzed when she was a teenager during like a diving incident or something and um I guess like I think through that experience it really like brought her to Christ and so she just has like a really really good perspective on heaven on eternity with Christ like she really to me it seems like she really clings to that hope because uh because of the fact that like she is paralyzed she knows that when she gets to heaven like her her whole body is going to be whole and um not just like the physical aspects but I think in one of these chapters it talks about like how our mind is going to be whole I just think this is a really really good book if you have been distracted recently by just the the ins and outs of life so if you have been feeling distracted and you really want to have an eternal perspective of course read your bible um but this is a good like book to um 
add to your reading list if you're already reading books. It's it's truly good. I need to read it again, but I recommend it. I also really like the cover. It's beautiful. She's also an artist, so yeah. I'm actually going to start from the bottom. And then there's this book, which if you guys have been following me for a while, I know the, the video that I have talking about this isn't posted, but I read this like probably in 2016. It's called The Resolution for Women by um, Priscilla Shear. She's a pre preacher, is she? I don't know. If you've seen um, like War Room, that was really, really popular a while ago. Um, she was in that. But I, I read this book and... I'm going to tentatively recommend it because of the fact that I remember reading this and it having like a big impact on my life. Um, there's all these resolutions that you make for your life. So like a resolution to be content, um, a resolution to value myself and celebrate others, a resolution to be devoted to Christ and defined by his word. And so I think it's another like read that you kind of want to take seriously like if if you're really trying to like commit to these things but yeah I just remember it being really really good I haven't read it in a while but I'm still going to recommend it um and then we've got The Purple Pig and Other Miracles by Dick Eastman yes I recommend this I think I have read it twice um how would I describe this it's like I, I think this book is really about the power of prayer, you know, the power of prayer and the power of intercession. And so, yeah, that's all I can really say. Again, it has been a while, but like I said, I read it twice and I can definitely recommend this book. And um, if you are someone who's like, you know, you really want to know like what the theology is of the, the authors and stuff that you're listening to, because I do think like that is kind of important, but I would still say like, even if you don't agree with like everything that the author is saying, like I, I just think this book is worth the read. If anything, it can at least ignite your like passion for prayer and be a good reminder that like God answers prayers and he's paying attention to our prayers. So yeah, it's good. Dang it, where did I um put the right here? Okay. And then this one, The Best Yes by Lisa, don't know how to pronounce her, her last name, but this is a really good book too. Um, Making Wise Decisions in the Midst of Endless Demands. If you are someone who is like constantly hurrying throughout your day or you feel overwhelmed and overworked, this is a really good book because it talks about that. Also, I just love the fact that there are Christian books where like, it's really good like all the information that you're being given is good but sometimes it's kind of like hard to read because it feels like you're just reading like a bunch of information this one is like definitely more in a storytelling format like she tells stories about her own life and then like how it applies to whatever she's trying to really like teach us or like encourage us in i should say so yeah i recommend this i read this one last year and um yeah, it's just, it's a good one. It shows you how to choose the best yes. So it does mean like saying no to other things, but then you get to say yes to the things that like God actually wants you to do. So you're not just like running around, you know, anxious and overwhelmed all the time. So yeah, there's that. Um, is that it? Okay, I still have some more. So I will just pull those out. Okay. So this one you guys would have seen on another um, video of mine. It's called Stewards of Eden. It's about biblical um, biblical views and mindset on the environment. It is, okay, first of all, I love the, the paperback film and stuff. I really loved the introduction. However, it was hard for me to get into. So I tried to read this book because it was like part of my challenge. Um, I tried to read it, but it's like, it's so, the, the terminology that's used is like very, like, like if you were a, a student in like theology, 
then I feel like maybe it would be a little bit easier to read. But I don't know. I just personally found the language like really hard to get into. So if it was like told in more of a story format or not even a story format, but the, the words were kind of like simplified to where I could understand better. Um, I feel like I could have gotten through this book, but because of that, I haven't. But I'm still holding on to it because the information is good and maybe one day I will read it. But I kind of ended up skipping it on my list. There will probably be another video about this, but my reading list did not go as planned, so it's fine. But you'll see when I do my um, June, like the books I read in June, you'll see it was just like, I just ended up kind of reading books that I wanted to read. Okay, and then we have another book that I read from church. Hold on. So yeah, there's this book. It's called... Um, Seven Weeks of Wisdom, another book that I read with my church. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's been a while. I, I'm i sure it like really helped. And I think that this, this is another book that's good to read with a group so that you guys can talk about it and discuss it. It does have discussion questions, but I really can't say like too much about it because I honestly don't really remember what I read. I should go back maybe and look at it. But... Um, yeah, you already know the title said Seven Weeks of Wisdom. So it is about wisdom, like wisdom in our everyday lives. Um, oh, actually, this book is written to help you in your search for God's wisdom. His wisdom helps you discover how success is actually achieved and how a rich life can be lived both in time and eternity. So, yeah. Okay, and then... I feel like I did this in a weird order. But that's okay. Okay, and then another book by Priscilla Shear, Fervent. This book, yeah, it's a woman's battle plan for serious, specific, and strategic prayer. Another book on prayer. Um, I, yeah, I know it's something that I really got a lot out of um, when I did read it. And so I'm going to go ahead and recommend it, even though it's been a while, because it just is like, teaching you how to really like fight your battles in prayer like taking everything to the lord and it gives you like scriptures and stuff that you can look at to really base your prayers off of which i think is important i also love the fact that one you can write like notes and there's more than this but um i mean this is the amount of notes but oh darn okay so there's these little prayer strategy pages but i've used them all but um, they're just like these little cards that you can um, rip out and then like write your prayers on. I really, really um, enjoyed and went through this book at the time. So yeah, and then this is another book that I got from a friend. It is called Following Jesus in the Real World. And it is Discipleship for the Post-College Years. So sounds good, but um, I haven't read it, so I can't tell you anything about it. But I think that is something that we could use some help on following Jesus in the post-college years. Okay. And then I think we are almost done. We just have three more. And these are three books that I haven't read. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So this one is also by Lee Strobel. It's called The Case for Christ. So this one is about, like, is there evidence that um, Jesus like actually died on the cross for one and then like rose from the grave i believe that that's what it's about um yeah there's also a movie called the case for christ i do recommend that that was a good movie but i got this i bought this book from the library and i just i haven't read it yet and then there's this book it's called the Mag magnificent obsession i haven't read this one either so i yeah it says crave a real encounter with god i really don't know <laughs> like really anything about it I just I've had it for a while and I haven't read it so I'm keeping it on my shelf so that I can actually look through it and see if it's something that I want to keep um yeah and then this is a book that I got from school it's called playing with fire and it just like shows you how to read the bible and the different like genres that are in the bible so this is like 
this is more so like a book to read if you are like studying you know a particular book of the bible or you're reading through that book and you want to understand like how to read through it like kind of context and stuff um and it's more like a general kind of like overview context if that makes sense like it's not going to take you chapter by chapter um although i'm seeing like an outline in here <laughs> but yeah so this isn't something that i would like really just read straight through but i want to see if i can like use it for any of my bible studies in the future so i've just been like holding on to it but that is it thanks for joining me today i just wanted to show you guys that especially now that everything's organized and i will also show you guys what's on this shelf which is like those are just i think well they're not all fiction books but those are just like books not necessarily christian books although i do have like some chronicles of narnia books from that series that didn't fit here i do consider them like christian just because it's c.s lewis and the symbolism is like pointing to christ but i put it in here anyway so i will show you guys that too